I will be your first time relatively reluctant host, Joe. <laughs> uh, so hopefully uh, many of you have done this before. You've seen it happen in action last year. Um, this is something that kind of came together after uh, my partner David Allen was kind of involved with Trigger's Toys in the earlier years. Um, a little brainstorming uh, after the a couple years ago and, and came up with how do we make it bigger and, and try to get community more, even more around this uh, amazing charity and amazing event. And so we created the Fantasy Bar Graph. Uh, it pulls together you know, all facets of the supplier side, distributor side, pulls together all of our bartender community. Um, and it's really an amazing thing and it really expands on what Brian's put together. Um, and we all do it really, it gives us an outlet to give uh, that Brian created for us. Um, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Brian and, and what he's done. <laughs> well, sir. Um, but uh, I'm not going to talk too much right here at the beginning. I want to give it over to Brian so that he can, you know, just real quickly cover, you know, what is Trigger's Toys? Why are we doing what we're doing? You know, it's a very important, you know, cause. And uh, and so without further ado, sir. He's way more to go than I am. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Brian, and I'm a. Uh, uh, oh, Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, I think I'm like the first and only person to ever wear a suit to industry alley. <laughs> um, so, uh, thank you guys. This is like overwhelming. It's uh, tough. You guys know, always know I cry. It's what I do. Um, <laughs> it's like, might as well get it over with. So there are some people here that don't know what Trigger Toys is, don't really know exactly all the ins and outs of the Fantasy Bar Draft and how it started. So for those of you that know the story, you've heard it a thousand times from me, too bad you're gonna have to hear it again. So here we go. So, but before um, I go into that, a few months ago, we all came into this building for a completely different reason, but a little bit of the same, to support one of our own, to help someone that you know we wanted to rally around, and it's kind of what we do as a hospitality industry. And it was only fitting, I mean, there was no other place that we were gonna do this at than Industry Alley. And the fact that Charlie was totally on board with this, and you know, look at him just kicking ass like he does. <laughs> You know, I want to thank you, Charlie, for, for letting us do this here. Um, I mean, again, it was, it was a no-brainer. Um, so I brought, sorry, I have notes. Um, I'd like to thank the Academy. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I saw a video online, and it's going to make you guys laugh, but it was of Mr. Rogers. And he was an accepting an award, uh, probably a Lifetime Achievement Award. I don't know the last time you've seen Mr. Rogers, but that guy's awesome go back and look at life lessons, like that guy's amazing. Um, and he said, life is just a four letter word, like love or zoom or tape or pain. It, what ultimately matters is what you do with it. Just words. And to actually do something, you have to make something. And what we are doing is amazing. And I get to stand here on this microphone and talk about it, but None of this would happen without you guys. None of it. And I think, yeah. I've been over here talking about the energy of the night and the energy of what this event has become. And I think it's because like, we all kind of stand proud of what we're doing. We all, the energy that night isn't, I say it's like New Year's or your birthday or your wedding or whatever, but it's, it's just this thing that we all should be proud of. And we, we stand a little taller and we, hug each other a little tighter and because we're doing something that is literally changing people's lives and most of the people that we all will help, we will never meet, ever. But we still do it because it's the right thing to do and we can do it. That's, you know, and so I'm, I'm just so honored to be able to, to stand here and, and to do this and might as well have some fun while we're doing it. Um, so really quickly about how Trigger's Choice started because a lot of people have been asking me today how it started. Really, it started in this weird place. You know, I, I was unhappy in, in, my, in my job, and unfortunately, I ended up losing that job in the recession, and I didn't know what 
to do. I, I was single, I was living in a house that I pretty much couldn't afford, and that was about to go away if I didn't find a job pretty quick. And I just was in this spot, like, what am I gonna do? And you had two choices, either feel sorry for yourself or do something about it. And so I just made a list of the things that made me happy. What was gonna change this little rut? And we've all been in ruts before, right? And so one of the glaring things was, I really just wanna do stuff in my community. It makes me happy. And so I just started um, training my dog, and, and I knew that was the avenue I wanted to go. And um, we met, in my, on my first visit, I, I met a little girl, and, and uh, who I still talk to, I literally talked to their family yesterday. Um, and she was in going through therapy, and she was crying the whole time, and it just was so sad. And, she didn't want to be there. She didn't know why she was there, and she just wanted her mommy, and you know, all these things. And at the very end, you know, the nurse was basically saying, like, I don't know what we're going to do. Right? She's not, she's not really responding to this. And I said, like, would she like to pet the dog? And it was a very simple thing. That interaction turned into her reaching in the bags and feeding the dog, and um, that was amazing. And. And then we threw treats through this little pop-up tunnel. The kids always, like, you know, everywhere you go and you see the kids' stuff, they're always calling the tunnels, mind you. Um, we threw treats, Trigger went through it, she went through it, and it was this crazy moment where they ran and got her mom and came out, and I didn't know this was like this huge pointy moment, and it was like this life-altering thing for me. I mean, it was, she had all these firsts, first to crawl, first to do all these things, and I didn't know, I, it was just, taking my dog to make me happy. I mean, honestly, that's what, that's what I wanted to do. And um, that changed my life, that one interaction. And I, I went back to my car and, and uh, I called my girlfriend and my wife and I, I said, Let, let's, let's, let's like call our friends and get some toys and take them to a children's hospital. Let's, let's, let's do this because I want to give this little girl something. And I don't know who she is and I don't know how I'll ever find her again, but I wish I had something to give her. Um, and I know, I've said this many times, I know what the weather was like outside, I know what I was wearing, I know what the parking spot I was parked in. I know what the air tasted like. I know every single thing about that moment because I remember the moment that my life literally changed. And it was from that moment on that I was just going to do it. Like it was just like, the, no wasn't an option. Like it just has to be done because it's the right thing to do. And then you guys came along and changed everything. You know, once what, what was $500 or $1,000 and we thought we were gonna like change the world, turned into 10, 20, last year $100,000. This year, this year, like, I said, I'm like, there's no way we're gonna get this. $150,000, we, we kinda got a shot at it. Um, we have 32 brands. If we can raise, as of this moment, $79,000. This is day one of the next 30 days. So we just got started. And to have that much money is crazy. So it's, it's just a, just a crazy, I can't believe like we're standing here. It's just, it's, it's wild, so I know I need to move on, but um, Matthew 36, 22 says, love thy neighbor. And I love you guys, you're my neighbors. I love you so much, and I thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. How many of you guys uh, participated last year? So pretty good, we're pretty good. We've got a lot of new faces. So I'm gonna cover the rules real fast and how this goes. So uh, I'm gonna introduce our uh, five captains that were chosen at random prior to the event. They've chosen their order of draw. Uh, they're gonna run through it. We're gonna pick out their teams. They're gonna select all of their bartenders, their celebrity barbacks, their concepts. We've got something new a little bit with the concepts this year. Uh, and their sponsor packs. Um, and then, and then we're going to do a couple things right after that, um, and, and get the party going. So, without further ado, uh, might I introduce your captains to you? We have Christian Jillian. We have. Chris
Chris Furtado standing in for Mr. Leo Oliver. Yeah. And Stephen Halpin. And Julie Gaynor. Assisting me today are the lovely Rebecca Harris and Mr. Jules. We don't need the last name. <laughs> but, okay, guys. So uh, these are actually standing in the order in which they selected their draw. Um, and we're kind of going to run right into it and get this party going. So, uh, without further comment, Christian, would you like to pick the first three bartenders? We've got Andy Hack from Paramore. Anel Banda from Lark in the Park. Justin Payne from Sissy Southern Kitchen. <laughs> Sir, who do we got? We got Christina Henley, Bowen House. Bowen, probably. Kenny Glass, USPP. Yoki Kinoshita from Midnight Rambler. Stephen, who we got? Jorge Herrera from Mexican Trigger. Jesse Torres from. Yeah. Let's go already. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and Christopher Gaspar from Iowa. Sorry, there's some mechanics involved in this guy. It's just some mechanics. <laughs> not gonna lie, not gonna lie. I can talk fast and just slap up names. It's fine. <laughs> Russell. 